All right, guys, in this video, we're going to take a look at fluid font sizes, or if you want to call it responsive font sizes. So I've got an example document here. So for example, for H1 tags, our heading tags, if we reduce the screen size down, we can see that the heading font size reduces in proportion to the width of the screen. So it kind of has this scaling effect. However, if we go past a certain point, we can see that the font size no longer decreases in size. So we're going to set this up in this quick little project now. We're going to be implementing this responsive fluid fonts and making sure we don't dip below a certain value for our headings. Otherwise, if we reduce the screen width to a really small screen width, then this heading potentially just zooms all the way out. So ideally, we'll have a base font size that we'll have as a minimum. So this is really easy to do in modern CSS. We can use a combination of the viewport width CSS unit and the max CSS function. So I've got an example document here already, this index.html and this style.css associated with it. And at the moment, if I hop on over to the actual page, at the moment, I've got a font size for my H1 of 40 pixels. If I try and reduce the screen size and increase the screen size, obviously nothing happens with this font size. So all we need to do for our font size, instead of a pixel value here, we can specify a value based on the viewport width. So for example, if we have 10 VW in here, this will give a font size of 10% of the viewport width. So let's say, for example, our viewport width is 1000 pixels wide. I know up here it says 694, don't worry about that. Just as an example, let's say our viewport width is 1000 pixels. If we have 10 VW here, this will mean our font size will be 10% of 1000, which is 100. So it'll be 100 pixels for our font size. So let's see what happens if we save this now. We can see it's updated in my browser here. Let's try and reduce the screen and we can see, there we go. Our font is, or our font size is increasing and decreasing based on the width of the screen. Now, obviously, if we reduce the screen size all the way down, ideally, we'll have a minimum font size that we can't go below. So let's implement that as well. All we need to do is use the max function from CSS. So we can use the max function and we can specify any number of values here with any number of CSS units. And the CSS max function will return the greatest number that we pass in. So for example, we have 10 VW here. Let's also pass in something like 30 pixels. So if we try and increase and decrease the width of the screen now, Let's decrease all the way down and we can see it stops at a certain point because 10% of the width falls under 30 pixels. So because we're using this max function now, 30 pixels is currently greater than 10% of the viewport width. So the font size will be set to 30 pixels. However, once 10% of the viewport width is greater than 30 pixels, then 10% of the viewport width will be used instead. So this is how we can create this nice responsive font sizes simply using the max CSS function coupled with the viewport width unit.